All right, so I've been off for a few days. Everybody know I was on a seven day water fast. Thanks to the most high, was successful. I'm looking a little weight drain, but everybody asks me, man, what's going on? What you think about Frank Martin and the Shakur Stevenson situation? And all I got to do, man, is say something, 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 something just ain't right. And we're going to talk about it right now. Let's go. All right, all right. So, guys, forgive me. I know I look a little crackish right now. Like I said, I just got me off of a seven-day water fast. I ain't have any food for seven days, but that don't matter. Just give me a week. Your boy be back looking like he usually look. I know how to do my fast properly with the sea salt, the water. Come off my fast. I had a fantastic workout. Believe it or not, I didn't lose no strength. Everybody knows my one addiction is working out, and I'm not the only one. So a lot of people are addicted to exercise, and that's nothing wrong with that. That just means we're going to live to be centurions out here. Hit that like button if you're new. Hit that like button if you're part of the Tough Glove family. Hit the subscribe button if you're new is what I meant to say. But we're going to get into this conversation. It's a lot to unpack when you think about it, right? But not really. I'm going to give you my take on it. And the reason why, I listen, guys, aside from the fast, because I did give you a video on Friday about the Jamel Charlo, which I got another video coming out about Jamel Charlo this week. But, you know, during my fast, I just need to meditate, focus, prayer, and do what I do. So I couldn't really focus on making the videos, but I heard and saw everything that was going on with the Frank Martin and Shakur situation. I was not ignoring your emails. I do appreciate your ears. I do appreciate your eyes and your time. You understand what I'm saying? And so as soon as I got right back to it, it's time to get this content out to you. And I'm glad to do it. Listen, man. Frank Martin, you got some splaining to do. You got some splaining to do. Because listen, this is the fact. Any video you've ever seen on my channel concerning Frank Martin has been nothing but respect for Frank Martin. I want you guys to understand, this is not a boxes channel. This is a boxing channel. I have no alliance to the PBC. I have no alliance to Top Rank. I have no alliance to any of these guys. If I see these guys in the street and they upset about anything I said, and they approach me about it. I'm not changing my stance on nothing. I pay my subscriptions to watch their fights. I pay my pay-per-views. I make uh, YouTube content. And I'm entitled to my opinion. Now, with that said, I wouldn't even bother a boxer. Even if it's my favorite fighter, Terrence Crawford. I'm not going to run up to him and ask for a picture or nothing. Because I've never been a, a celebrity type of... You know, I've never been that way. Like, I've stood next to celebrities and, and didn't even ask them for anything. You know what I'm saying? Like just, oh, it was good to see them. That's that's how I see it, right? So I don't have no stake. I don't have no interviews to gain. If I get interviews, it's, it's just organic, right? It's not because I kiss somebody's butt to get the interview. Now, first of all, like I said, I respect Frank Martin. I think Frank Martin is one of the best talents in that camp, aside from Jamel Charles. Look at any video I've ever made. There's never been no disrespect. There's always been upliftment of Frank Martin. Now, we all know for the past almost, I would say just under a year, right? Frank Martin has signed with Man Down. Every Spencer has been talking, throwing out Shakur Stevenson's name every chance he can, right? We was talking about the Frank Martin and Shakur Stevenson, right? We wanted to see Frank Martin versus, not Shakur Stevenson, Frank Martin versus Keyshawn Davis, right? But it's Errol Spence that kept saying that, no, we want the Shakur Stevenson fight. We want the Shakur Stevenson fight. This is what um, Errol Spence meant from Man Down Promotions is saying about Frank Martin. And Frank Martin never came out and said otherwise. And so I hate to think that this was done to build Frank Martin up off of Shakur Stevenson's name. Even though the smoke he was directly called out by Keyshawn Davis and everything. We overlooked that and the fact that we said, okay, he wants the Shakur Stevenson smoke. He feels he's up there. We agree. He should get fights with Shakur Stevenson, Tank Davis, Devin Haney, you know, uh, Keyshawn Davis. You know, he should get these big name fights. You understand what I'm saying? But here's the problem that I have. This fight, I was looking so forward to it, right? Because a lot of people are giving Shakur Stevenson and Terrence Crawford uh, treatment. 
Now, the problem that I had while I was on my fast, I was seeing a lot of effery because immediately, as soon as we found out the fight was off, immediately. And see, this is how you know the channels that just want your clicks and your views and the ones that's playing off of your emotions than the one that wants you to truly love the sport of boxing. And he, as soon as the news came out that the fight was off, all of these narratives came out. All of these narratives. He has a tank fight lined up, which was false. He, uh, you know, Shakur Stevenson and them, they tried to underpay him, which was false. You understand? And I'm going to prove all of that because y'all know how tough glove boxing do. We don't run our mouth over here. We show you the film. We let you hear the audio. And my thing is this, man. I got on Shakur Stevenson's back. As much as I love Shakur Stevenson, as much as I think he's the future of the sport of boxing, the future pound for pound number one, right? I gave him that. I kept the same energy when he turned down Devin Haney because I feel like even though, yes, you are Shakur Stevenson, a two-division weight champion, unified in one, one of the best fighters in the world, right now, today, on most people's pound-for-pounders, you should have took that 25% and then all roads would have led to you. All of the greats done it. You didn't do it. Okay, fine. We here now. I said what I had to say then. I meant what I said. And everybody knows I feel how I feel about Terrence Crawford. He's part of the Terrence Crawford Bowmat camp and all that, you know, on that side. But I don't buy into the tribalism of boxing. I don't care if you on, if you PBC, if you top rank, if you disown. You understand? This is a boxing channel. I like all three of those guys. I like fighters from all three of those camps. And I'm going to give you the information based on that fact alone. I'm going to help you to be a real boxing fan and not a fanboy. There's nothing wrong with being a casual, but there's everything wrong with being a fanboy. You got these big ass channels, right? Like uh, Champ Side. You got BFTB, you know, running their mouth about things they don't know about. Right. And this is another reason why they hate Blue Blood Sports TV, because he's not about pushing narratives. This is why when when news breaks, you never see me immediately that day come out with uh, a video trying to explain that, because how can you explain something when you don't know what's going on? It's always better to be right than first. Let me repeat that again. It's always better to be right than it is to be first. Now, like I said, Frank Martin deserves to be up there mentioned with all of those guys, but the simple fact of the matter is, he is not 50-50 with uh, Shakur Stevenson. That's just what it is. He used, How can you be 50-50 with a guy who you used his name for clout? And when I say that, it may not have been Frank Martin because I don't want to put too much pressure on, I don't want to, I don't, I'm going to apply the pressure to Frank Martin because that's where it lies, but I don't want to act like he's the only guilty party involved here. I'm not going to act like he has the final decision and what goes on. You understand? He signed, he's, the, he signed in, in, in a 360 deal, so to speak. He signed to a man that signed to another man that signed to a Showtime. So I can understand where, where they say, okay, well, he was going to offer this much and he never made that much in his life, but he still got a lot of hands in the cookie jar. And then plus taxes automatically is going to take 24% of that. So he ain't going to be left with a whole lot. But, but I'm going to let you hear out of Frank's own mouth why that is not an excuse. Let's go. Because y'all know I don't play games. I come with the receipts. I come with the receipts. Now, I remember all of the nonsense that uh, Shakur Stevenson was going through, right? And Devin Haney was going through when he kept bringing up Devin Haney's name and wanted to fight. And Devin Haney sent the offer and uh, Shakur Stevenson allegedly turned it down. Okay? A lot of people agreed with me. A lot of people didn't agree with me. A lot of people felt like Shakur deserved 50-50. A lot of people didn't feel like he deserved 50-50. But the fact is, with Devin Haney, I did not feel Shakur deserved 50-50. That was my personal opinion. Nothing about Shakur that I'm disrespecting. But this is what Frank Martin say, and I want to know what energy, where did this energy go? From what I've seen, they, Shakur was basically saying that he feel like he worth more. Um, feeling on that, he want a, a better split, a more fair split. But uh, I feel like Devin, I don't know, he took like a small, lower percentage to go against uh, uh Cambosis, you know, he had to do that. So I feel like uh, sometimes as fighters, you know, we got to, we got to, uh, we might have to accept certain terms like that, you know, to get in those, in those type of positions, Agreed. you know, the table's turn. Oh, we going to, we going to bang out. We going to take that. We going to take that because we trying to get to the top, you know, and then after that table's going to turn. So. And he tweeted, I ain't the ish. 
I ain't duck-ish, right? Now, when it comes to Shakur, him voicing his opinion on Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney, and he said Shakur should have took it. So my question is, why is this fight not happening, right? It can't be because of money. Because if it was because of money, y'all would have went the purse bid. So y'all had to agree on the deal. The WBC is not lying about it. Bob Everham came out with Blue Blood Sports TV. And this is what he had to say on Blue Blood Sports TV. Let's get into it. Hold on. Let me do this right quick, y'all. Let me do this right quick. Let's put this up here. Right? Let's put this, let's listen, let's listen to what went down when Bob Evan was interviewed by Blue Blood Sports TV. And this clarified everything that we needed to know. Nope, not that one yet. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. Bear with me. Well, the date. Uh... All right, let's stop it there for a minute. Okay, so... I stopped it there because we're about to get into the interview that Blue Blood Sports TV had with Bob Arum. And this is what Bob Arum had to say out of his own mouth. Let's go. Well, the date, uh, uh, BBC agreed to the deal. Well, the date, uh, BBC agreed to the deal. And we sent the contract out. And Martin refused to sign. And okay, so y'all heard it right there. They sent the contract out, and Frank Martin refused to sign it. Okay, all right? Y'all heard it out of Bob Arum's own mouth, okay? So let's talk about this. Frank Martin actually went on his Twitter and said, This internet is be the worst. MF's talking like they sent the contract or something. I'm confused. I'll lace up with any of you MF's at 135. So I'm confused. The fans are confused because you said there was no contract sent. Bob Avram just said that there was a contract sent. So somebody is lying. Let's go. And, and this purse that we uh, were offering was like six times more than he's ever made in his career. Six times more than he's ever made in his career. Okay? Now when Now, my thing is this. Now, I understand. I'm not one to tell a man how much he's worth, okay? It's not me putting my life on the line. It's him putting his life on the line. But you have to keep the so same I energy. Let's go. So I can't understand it. Uh, uh, you know, why he uh, pulled out. Uh, and, and they didn't, they didn't give you an explanation for the they reason? Don't understand, they don't understand it either. Now, that's crazy. Because now... If he's not negotiating directly, that means that he turned it down because Bob Arum is saying the PBC didn't even understand why he pulled out the fight. So what's really going on? If the PBC is negotiating his contract, right, and they don't even understand why he pulled out the fight, I'm having a feeling that there may be too many hands in a cookie jar, right? Right? One man signed to another man signed to another man signed to Showtime. So even if he gets that high payday, he got so many hands in a cookie jar. Let's go. Wow. So do you think it was his team that just decided not to make the fight happen or it was just him or what the money? They didn't feel like the money was enough? Well, of course the money was, was plenty because that's what they asked for and that's what we finally agreed to pay. Boom. So that 50-50 nonsense that Champ Side was talking about, about keeping the same energy as Shakur Stevenson, that goes right out the window. Because the purse bid was canceled because they came to a deal. And they came to a deal because Bob Arum decided to give them exactly the number they asked for. So, I mean, they can't say that the money wasn't enough because the money they were asking for was enormous. Uh, and we agreed to pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's a lot of... Uh, I heard it. The money was enormous. They didn't want to pay it, but they did. I personally think that they got the number, right, that they wanted. And they said, you know what? 
We didn't think they was going to accept that. But since they did, maybe they're desperate and we can get a little more. And I believe that the PBC tried to do to Shakur Stevenson what they tried to do to Terrence Crawford last year. Right? Because you got to remember, Frank Martin is not sitting at these negotiating tables. Just like Errol Spence wasn't sitting at the negotiation table. So Terrence Crawford had first-hand information and Errol Spence had to rely on what Al Heyman had to tell him. That could be the same situation that we face in here. Uh, Let's chat go. and a lot of different reports. Obviously, you know how that operates within the sport of boxing. A lot of people are saying, well, the money wasn't right. And so that's why he wanted 50-50. One thing is sure that the money was right. Mm -hmm. Money was not an right issue. If that's what PBC asked us for. That's what PBC asked them for. Okay? That's what PBC asked them for, and they agreed to it. They had the venue. They had the date. They had everything already. The purse bid was canceled. Sure. Let's go. And we finally agreed to pay. So the money has to be right. That's not was not the problem. So that's not the issue. And, and so now, how does it operate with Shakur? Because we know it was a uh, the WBC was ordering the two because of the vacant WBC title. So how does that work? with now replacing you go, you go, you go to a, a next guy. Next option. Mm -hmm. Because since the next guy on the list a, or turn down a fight. Can Shakur have the a choice of opponent since the ordered person choice of opponent pulled out? Well, here I mean, we go. Let's they were, and then we worked it out with the WBC, and we hope to have an announcement shortly. Okay, okay. boom. Hey, I'm not gonna you have to put on Bloods. big fights, enough. I'm not going to play Blue Blood's whole interview. Y'all go check it out. It was dope. But they worked it out with the PBC, the PBC, the, the, the WBC. The WBC mandated the fight. That's why the purse bid, they said, take it the purse bid if y'all can't come to a deal. But the purse bid was canceled because they came to a deal. So who's lying? The WBC? Top rank or somebody on Frank Martin's side is lying. Right? Because the WBC now says, okay, well, Frank Martin turned down the fight. Bob Amram spoke to the WBC. They were willing to work with him and they hopefully got another opponent coming soon. But that was not on the top rank and Shakur Stevenson side. So that immediately, that immediately puts a dent in everything that all of these narrative creating channels. BFTB, champ side, you know, with the 50-50 with the nonsense. You understand? Shakur Stevenson even caught champ side out. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. When y'all come to this channel, y'all never going to get the fake stuff. Y'all going to get the real stuff, regardless of if I'm a fan of a boxer or not. Because it's important that you get the right information. You know? It's important. That's why I said it's always more important to be right than it is to be first. And that's just the bottom line. That's just the bottom line, right? But let's go. You know, we got some more for you. We got some more for you. Because the fact is, Frank Martin already stuck his foot in his mouth. He already stuck his foot in his mouth. And now he has to keep that same exact energy that he had when he was giving his opinion on a Shakur Stevenson versus Devin Haney fight. And he even came out in a tweet, right? And said that, you know, he wasn't, uh, it wasn't, it had nothing to do with the money. You know, Frank Martin came out. He said, I ain't duck ish. He said, to my fans, I want this fight just like y'all. And I never asked for no 50 50 split. So immediately, what Champside said goes right out the window. If he never asked for the 50 50 split, right? Y'all see it. Ask for no 50-50 split. If he never asked for a 50-50 split, that means that there is a disagreement on his side of it. If he didn't ask for 50-50, the person that's negotiating for him is the one that's asking for 50-50. And we can't even really go on that for sure because Shakur Stevenson even came out with his own tweet debunking that. Y'all see it right there with your own eyes. So everybody got all of these opinions. You understand what I'm saying about, you know, Shakur Stevenson is really ducking. Shakur Stevenson need to keep the same energy that he had when he fought Devin Haney. And he said that he was worth 50-50. I even said Shakur Stevenson wasn't worth 50-50 at that time. But anyway, Frank Martin again. Gotta keep this energy. Better split a 
more fair split. But uh, I feel like Devin, I don't know, he took like a small, lower percentage to go against us. Uh, Y'all hear it out of his own uh, mouth. Cambosis, you know, he had to do that. Receipts. So I feel like uh, sometimes as fighters, you know, we got to, we got to, uh, we might have to accept certain terms like that, you know, to get in those, in those type of positions. Point blank period. Point blank period. So the fact that he said that, and now he came out and said he never asked for no 50-50 split. There is confusion somewhere. Somebody somewhere is not telling the truth. And that's what it boils down to. Somebody somewhere is not telling the truth. I don't believe Bob Arum is lying because he said he offered them. I mean, they asked him for a number. He didn't say he offered. He said they asked him for a number. And initially, they probably ain't want to pay that much. They probably didn't feel Frank Martin was worth that much. But at the end of the day, Shakur Stevenson probably took a pay cut just to make this fight happen. So all of you guys out there talking about Shakur Stevenson is a duck. Shakur Stevenson didn't really want that smoke. You're wrong. Simple and plain. You're wrong. Let's talk about this right quick, right? Let's look at some tweets. Okay, I was going to say I closed it. Okay, so now. Come on now. May 10th. Why would I drop my people date? Chill. Okay, who y'all got tonight? Whatever, whatever. It says, I ain't duck nothing. That's what Frank said. But, and that's all he said. So that's pretty much letting me know it wasn't his decision. Either it wasn't his decision or somebody is lying. And I'm going to give him the benefit of doubt and say that he's not lying, okay? And it says, again, to my fans, I want this fight just like y'all. And I never asked for no 50-50. But here's the problem. Shakur Stevenson immediately responded. Said, you asked me in my DMs yesterday. Don't make Shakur Stevenson post the DM. Don't make him post the DM. I explained to you all the numbers and you still asked for half of the money. Stop the cap. Now, a lot of y'all talking about, yeah, Frank Martin deserves half. Let me explain to you why he don't, right? Shakur Stevenson, Frank Martin is a terrific fighter. I like his fighting style. But he has not done enough in the sport to equal up to a Shakur Stevenson. And just because you hate Shakur Stevenson like you hated Tevin Crawford, don't automatically elevate him to 50-50. Because when you put their resumes together, it don't match up. Shakur Stevenson, two uh, silver medalist, Olympian. What are you doing in the pro game? Two division world champ, unified at 130. Okay? Now, what does his resume look like? What is Shakur? Let, let's look at Frank Martin's resume first. Frank Martin's resume. I Look, Jackson Marina is, is a decent fighter, but, I, you know, he had already been defeated a couple times. But we're going to move up, right? Michelle Vereva, great fight for Frank Martin. He performed. He did wonderful. I gave him high praises for his performance in that fight because Michelle Vereva was a real one. And I still think Michelle Vereva is a real one. You understand? And that was a great fight. I even gave him credit for Autumn Harutunyanan, where I hope I didn't butcher that too much, when a lot of people wasn't giving him credit for that fight, but I knew how good of a fighter Autumn was. And in fact, he did struggle in that fight. Okay? It is what it is. He won the fight. He dominated near the end, but he did have issues with that fight. But I still gave him credit for that. So you got on his resume, no champions at all. None. One division, Artem and Michael Rivera, okay? And this is why I believe Frank. He's, a, he's not a dumb guy. He's an intelligent guy. He put way too much work in to be at this point where his, he's, where, where his stock is going to go down because of this foolishness that's probably out of his control. So now let's look at Shakur Stevenson's resume. You understand? Because y'all like to just bring up his last fight. But I'm going to bring up the real deal. Let's talk about Jose Gonzalez. Let's talk about that at 126. Won the championship, right? The WBO. Let's talk about Jeremiah Nakathita, who wasn't a bad fight, even though he did get demolished his last fight. But when he fought Shakur Stevenson, he only had one loss. And in fact, Shakur Stevenson got a lot of criticism for that fight. After that, Jamel Herring, who was a champion, right? Stepped up to 130, took that. Oscar Valdez, right? In the, he was an Olympian, right? I believe he had the WBC, right? He was a champion. Shakur Stevenson took that, right? Another fighter, another fighter, Robeson Canseco, who is a good fighter, who only has the one loss to Shakur Stevenson, right? Took that. Put his, put his unified belts on the line, took that, even though he did miss weight. And then from there, he moved up to 135. 
All right. So when you look at their resumes, their resumes do not compare. Don't talk 50 50 talk. I hate telling another man what he's worth because I'm not. I'm not doing that. It's not me putting my life on the line. It's him putting his life on the line. But you got to keep it 100. It don't look like Frank Martin had any reason not to take this fight. There's some politics going on. And if you ask me, I truly believe that it was out of Frank Martin's control and he can't really come out and say what he want to say. All he's trying to really say is it wasn't my fault. Now, if it's true that he was in Shakur Stevenson's DM, right? And Shakur Stevenson explained the numbers. This is what happens, right? This is what happens when you have other people handling your business because them people handling your business can negotiate your business and then come back and lie to you. That was the same situation with Evel Spence and Bob, I mean, and uh, Al Heyman last year. Evel Spence wasn't at the negotiating table. Terrence Crawford knew firsthand what was going on. Evel Spence was just waiting to hear from Al Heyman and what they were going to do based on what Al Heyman decided. So Al Heyman could have told him anything. And that's why he started to feel played and he had to take matters into his own hand. And when he took matters into his own hand, we got the Terrence Crawford fight and we got the, uh, the Terrence Crawford versus Evel Spence fight. Now, the Frank Martin Shakur fight was a great fight. It was supposed to happen in November. They secured the date. They had the deal signed and everything. So please stop with the narratives. There's nothing wrong with keeping it real. There's nothing wrong with keeping it real. Okay? Do I think Frank Martin is scared? No. But definitely, definitely, the fact that this fight fell apart falls on his side. I don't care how much you love the PBC. Facts are facts. Even 78 Sports TV was on Blue Blood's channel earlier asking, hey, did Frank Martin get back in contact with you yet? Did you hear anything? Because he even heard what Bob Avram said. And that's why I rock with 78, because while he does mainly support a lot of the PBC fighters, every Spence and all of them, he also keeps it 100. But he does try to twist narratives sometimes, too. But when his back is against the wall and he sees the facts laid out on the wall, he has no choice but to admit it. But you got some of them out there that will deny, deny, make narrative, make narrative, do anything they can to point the attention away from the person that deserves to get pointed at. So for all you that was in my email asking me how I feel about Shakur Stevenson and Frank Martin, I think that Frank Martin is not in control of his own career. I think that he was, it wasn't the, the split with Shakur Stevenson that he wasn't happy with. I think it was the split on his side, the money that he got to break up after he paid his trainers, after he paid man down promotion companies, after man he pays PBC. And then after they get whatever they get on the back end from Showtime, he just said, you know what? It's really not worth it. He probably was going to make at the end of paying everybody about the same he made for the Michelle Barrera fight. Because Bob Evram said he stood to make at least six times more. But if it's true about the numbers that Bob Evram said, it was actually more than that. So I think that there's a lot of politics being played behind the scenes that we don't understand. Anyway, that's how I feel about it. I hope you enjoyed the content. Do your boy a favor, right? Hit the like button. Share the video on Twitter. Share it on your Facebook. You understand? Hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. You appreciate the content. I got some more videos coming out for you this week. Jamel Charlo Media uh, Workout Reaction coming up either tomorrow or the day after. More than likely tomorrow. I appreciate you taking the time to check out the content. Tough Glove Boxing. I'm out.